This presentation has been developed by North Parks Mine and Rio Tinto using the resources of the Minerals Industry Safety and Health Centre at the University of Queensland. The three modules cover the management of major hazards in the minerals industry, including human factors issues, the events related to the North Parks air blast, and finally, the lessons learned from the event. This final module is an overview of the lessons learned from the North Parks air blast event. Several investigations followed the air blast event. A coroner's inquiry produced a report that was made available to the public. There are many lessons to be learned from this disaster. Some of the key learnings specific to block caving are Know your rock mass. Assess caveability. Before the mine is designed for block caving, Ensure that the rock mass is understood well enough to know where the caving will occur as required for mining objectives. Recognise that mine design is critical. Design risks must consider the extraction level, undercut hydraulic radius, operating parameters, caving openings and muck pile height, as well as air gap criteria. Recognise that production equals propagation. Production in a block caving operation, unlike mining by using explosives or mechanical mining equipment, is dependent upon the caving rate and therefore under the control of the cave shape and rock mass characteristics. If it does not fall, there can be no production. Manage the air gap. Control of the air gap is critical to air blast risk management. Put effective monitoring in areas outside cave boundary. Block caving designs require caving through to the surface. Monitoring systems should be in place to monitor activity in the rock mass and help predict cave progression, including final subsidence. Communicate the information from monitoring effectively. Have no openings into the cave. Openings into a cave offer the opportunity for destructive air blast paths. Have external reviews. External reviews check thinking, test assumptions and get other opinions. They also help address groupthink. Use experts with care. Experts should have clearly defined roles that ensure their advice considers all relevant information. Ensure appropriate knowledge, especially when the methods or technology are new. Be prepared for propagation problems. Block caving relies on uninduced cave propagation. There may be problems that cause propagation delays. The mine should be prepared for any action to induce propagation. Recognise the value of good community and government relationships. North Parks had developed a good relationship with the community and government before the event. These relationships contributed to cooperation and invaluable mutual support after the air blast. These and other lessons learned after the air blast provide useful information to block caving and other operations. But let's look more into the process of managing major hazards and the human factors. A major hazard risk management process was in place at North Parks. However, when the air blast related hazard was considered, the air gap was 10 to 20 metres. At that time, a potential event could generate enough energy to knock a person down. As such, it was seen, probably correctly, as a moderate risk, not warranting the major hazard status. However, as the cave propagated and the air gap greatly increased, so too did the potential energy source or the compressed air volume. With the possibility of the presence of openings into the cave as it propagated upward toward one level, the potential consequences of an event also changed from a moderate consequence of a knockdown to a violent, destructive air blast. This would have moved the situation into the major hazard area, but the hazard was missed in the major hazard risk management process. Identify and understand the hazard. A hazard that is not recognised or understood cannot be managed. Changes in personnel and block caving experiences over the life of the mine, noting that this was the only block caving mine in Australia, may have contributed to incorrect assumptions about the air blast hazard. 
identify controls to establish effective methods of reducing unacceptable risk through application of controls or barriers. The change of control from air gap limitation of 10 to 20 metres to a 60 metre muck pile height as a method to manage air blast risk may be an example of this problem. The design and location of the bulkhead on one level is another one. In both cases, the control that was in place was not adequate or appropriate for the specific major air blast event. Monitor status to ascertain whether assumptions about the hazard and controls are correct and whether the hazard is changing. Again, possibly due to the hazard understanding and appreciation issue, there were design issues related to monitoring and the air blast hazard. Seismic monitoring was limited and eventually unavailable. Information on cave dimensions and therefore size of the air gap had limited distribution. Deal with change, a major factor in major hazard risk management. Hazards change, risks change and controls change. Expert personnel changed at North Parks. The nature of the rock mass changed as the cave progressed. The size of the air gap changed and the air blast exposure became a factor on one level as the cave progressed. All of these changes affected the air blast risk but were seemingly unrecognised as contributors to increased risk. In conclusion, the major hazard risk management approach to the air blast hazard was flawed. As mentioned, comfort in uncertainty refers to the natural human tendency for people to feel comfortable with risk because they have not experienced a related unwanted event. This may be an issue in mining when hazards are difficult to clearly understand without investigative methods that would make mining uneconomical. Ground or rock mass related information is an example. Uncertainty about the importance and the relationship between factors such as rock mass changes, cave status, air gap, muck pile height and air blast risk might be expected in a new block caving operation. Developing comfort with this uncertainty, possibly reinforced by the absence of experience and any unwanted air blast events, would be a part of the human factors of the North Park's major hazard risk management. Avoiding comfort with uncertainty involves actions such as ensuring that uncertainty about hazards is recognised and appreciated. Aggressively trying to reduce uncertainty through monitoring and review, especially when potential consequences can be high. Investigating deviations from expectations thoroughly when a high uncertainty hazard is involved. Ensuring that formal and informal risk assessments err on the conservative side when hazards have high uncertainty. Mixed signals, hazard or risk information that indicate a possible problem at one point and no problem at another point, combined with previously discussed issues of uncertainty, could have clearly affected the quality of decision making in a new block caving project. The rapid caving rate might have been a mixed signal. Clearly the noise and vibration caused some discomfort, but the recognition that such caving meant the mine was starting to perform as designed may have lessened the concern. Missing signals, such as the absence of relevant data on ground conditions, as well as weak signals, such as the further discomfort of the drillers on the shift previous to the event, also fit into an event profile where recognised human factors issues may have contributed. Methods of avoiding mixed, missing and or weak signals usually involve the identification and application of effective methods to monitor or to get signals for critical information about the status of hazards. If a major hazard is present, careful consideration should be given to methods of monitoring the status of the hazard and the key controls on that hazard. If the monitoring is effective, the resultant information should not provide mixed or weak signals. Again, in an area of high unpredictability, conflicting or mixed signals should be dealt with conservatively. That is, address the bad signal and conservatively assess the good bad signal. Some or all of the symptoms of groupthink suggested by Janus. Overestimation of the group's invulnerability. Increased pressure towards uniformity. Closed-mindedness and collective rationalisation 
may also have been present in the decision-making concerning air blast risk at North Parks. The newness of the mining method, combined with other human factors issues, may have created the environment for groupthink on key issues that affected air blast risk, especially when production lagged due to slow or arrested propagation. To avoid groupthink, methods should be applied to improve the process by which the group makes decisions, including quality risk assessment, as well as deliberate selection of group members to encourage differing perspectives and opinions. Janice also suggests the following. Encourage members to raise objections or concerns. Seek input from external independent experts. Require the group to develop multiple scenarios. Require critical examination. Assign a devil's advocate. Most, if not all, major disasters across the spectrum of industries include engineering and management decision contributors. Human factors issues, as suggested at North Parks in 1999, may be common. They present a unique and significant challenge to the minerals industry. The conclusions are clear. History of major disasters tells us that problems in the engineering and management decision-making process are involved in most, if not all, major events and especially catastrophes involving inherent hazards. In the discussed case study, there were key learnings about the use of block caving methods in Australian mining. There are also learnings about the method of major hazard management and human factors in strategic decision making. Activities to address all three areas are essential to reduce the likelihood of mining disasters. Management of major hazards depends on good engineering and management decision making. Finally, it's important to recognise that the issues addressed in this resource are not unique to North Parks or mining in general. They are an inherent part of all industries and organisational cultures. According to Diana Vaughan, commenting on the NASA Challenger disaster in 1997, the challenge for administrators is how to develop the kind of frame of reference necessary for a collective mind and heedful interrelating in risky decision settings and still encourage the fresh perspective, the deviant view, the stranger's eyes, that will be sensitive to gradually developing patterns that normalise signals of potential danger, leading to failures of foresight, mistakes and disaster. We would like to thank Rio Tinto and North Parks Mine for their commitment to this presentation. This presentation is dedicated to the victims of the North Parks air blast, the drillers, Mr. Stuart Osman and Mr. Colin Lloyd-Jones, the manager of mining, Mr. Ross Bodkin, and the technical services team leader, Mr. Michael House.